Hey, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. It's me, Kyle Stanley, and I'm really excited to talk to Mark Hernandez this week. I talked to Michael Hicks last week. Michael, down to earth, easygoing guy, knows how to raise money. This week, Mark from a third world country and now has 46 units. All of them he owns under his belt. And this is a young, energetic, and just a uh, a guy who's got a huge heart. And you can tell that he's having fun with this journey. He's gamifying it. Uh, he even says he collects them like Pokemon. And uh, that that's fun. And, and to me, Mark is one of those guys that once you listen to him, you're going to want to keep on following him. And you're wanna, going to want to keep following his journey and see exactly how he's leveling up. Because he's going from 1 to 10 to now 46 units. And he's doing it by leveling up in very specific ways that we're going to talk about right now here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Let's go ahead and get to it with Mark Hernandez. Hey, everyone. Welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. I have a really exciting guest for you today with Mark Hernandez, an amazing story that I think will inspire a lot of you. And of course, we're going live right now in our Six Figure Formula group. And for those of you that are seeing the recording about three or four weeks later, what are you waiting for? Jump into the Six Figure Formula. You get to ask questions to our podcast guests, just like Mark. And we're doing this once a week in the group. You get to see it first. You get to ask questions and you also get a lot more right there at fearlesskyle.com forward slash six FF. You can go take a look, but Hey, Mark, uh, welcome in, man. I'm so excited for this podcast and uh, I want to go ahead and ask our icebreaker question, but then I want to give a little bit of a, a background of people too. So what is that craziest short-term rental Airbnb story that you've got for us? All right. Happy to be here. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, hey guys, name is Mark. Crazy idea. Uh, probably would be as I would say I am a, I love Pokemon and use the strategy for real estate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so collecting, you know, collecting this digital animals or, you know, you, you name it, Pokemon, translating it to um, to real estate and collecting them and evolving them to their highest income potential, which is short-term rentals, and then collecting them all and meeting other Pokemon trainers like Kyle and yourself, you know, so there's that's that. So that's you, me. <laughs> you talk Pokemon a lot. I talk Monopoly a little bit. You know, it's that I, I like I like how you put that because it's really... Uh, relatable to what I say, instead of going and owning, you know, Park Place from Park Place to Baltimore Avenue and everything in between, let's just go buy a few of those and add on to them and make them from single family to multifamily, the hotels, you know, and just keep on adding the value. So I love it, man. You're you're going from what, let me see if I can remember my Pokemon days. You're going from Charizard to, uh, no, it's Charmander. Charmander was the original, right? And then it's Charizard, right. the the most evolved version. Right, right. Yeah, they added it to their highest potential. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. cool. <laughs> they added so much now. You know, I'm only at the like the first generation. After they added more, I lost <laughs> track. But also that's adulting, you know, like after a while you outgrown it. It's like, you know what? As a millennial, I want to break the course. We are we can own property, you know, yeah. and I'm doing it. <laughs> uh that's that's awesome, man. So, you know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna be like super honest right now. And I know you and I um didn't even connect this, this dot, but you know, I get a lot of people messaging me on Instagram and I, I, every once in a while I'll start a conversation with someone, but you know, you, you had messaged me a few times and I kind of was like, Oh, here's someone trying to get freebie advice again, you know, like, here we go. And, and then about two weeks later, like you popped up in a group with me. I think it was, I can't even remember what room we were in together but you dropped the bomb of like, I have 46 doors and I own them all. And I'm like, say what? Like, <laughs> I just thought this, this guy like was just trying to hit me up for some information. And then suddenly before I know it, like you're killing it, man. And, and like, after getting to know you and getting to know your story, I just know it's something that everyone really needs to hear. Cause it's, it's an inspiration. So uh, Mark, if you can just kind of, first of all, before we go into that story, give people um, a little bit of an idea of what your portfolio is and uh, where the STRs are located as well. All right. Okay. Um, I'm based in Canada and a part, uh, not yet in the US, although I'd love to. Uh, so West Coast, Best Coast, Vancouver Island. Um, I work in healthcare, like most probably in my my background. My background is Filipino. You can tell from my name, um, Asian with Spanish last name at the same time in healthcare. So I take all the stereotypes there. <laughs> anyway, I, I work as a travel nurse and that led me into um, to real estate because when we travel, we need a place to stay. Mm -hmm. um, after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, so classic, the mindset's there like, okay, 
uh, you, I'm never a, a fan of rent ever since. So it's either when we go to travel places, it's either I pay the landlord, pay the rent, or pay myself. I'd rather do the latter. So I was yeah. like, how can I do that, right? So I started with one, usually with um, single guy, good income, use that to your advantage, use the, in the States, you can do the FH loan, 3%. For us, it's 5%, first time home buyer. So use that to your advantage. Start with that. Um, fortunately, my first property um, was an Airbnb in an area where I like, okay, you know, I, I love to have a slice of paradise. This is a great place. Um, and then since I travel for work, I can turn it on and off to which work very flexible. Um, usually when you're traveling, you need a, just a place to park your luggage. Yeah. So you can turn it on with, and make it income generating when you're not using it. And if you want to use it, turn it off, you know? So bought a two bedroom condo um, for 350 and it makes 10 to 15,000 monthly. So like, wow. wow, this is like my salary, you know? It's like replicating myself without effort. And then just having a friend manage it for me, which is good, like perfect. You know, uh, I like, okay, um, not really having knowledge, but I know that at some point I need to diversify at the same time, not really renting. So I, I need that. Uh, I, I want to pay myself. It's like a piggyback. So that's initially my goal. And little did I know that I'm, that would be the start of my portfolio. Um, so cash flow is one, but the equity is king, you know, or cash is king, they say, but for me, equity is king as an investor myself. Mm. So a few, few years later, that 350 appraised into 1.3. So that's like wow. my first million right there. And then little you know, you can take that money out. It's like a, a piggy bank. Take the money out, break the mortgage, refinance, and use the money to buy more, you know, and evolve it more. Like, you know, so um, so that is a vacation rental, another guest avatar. But my um most of my portfolio I use um because I see the advantage of being in the healthcare. So targeting the travel nurses or traveling medical professional, which works out because I really conceptualized this during pandemic as with everyone, I think uh, pandemic really gives you a little bit of lots of thinking. You stay home like, okay, what am I doing with my life? So including myself. So I'm like, okay, um, do I, it really takes a toll in healthcare. So I feel mm -hmm. for my brothers and sisters in the healthcare space, yeah. I'm with you. And that made me really like, have a deep dive conversation with myself and like, really, what do I want to do? Is this something that I want to do three to five years from now? Um, I love healthcare, but at the same time for me, it's not sustainable uh, with that current. Um, so, but I said, okay, this portfolio I have. Um, so passively I have, I made it from one to 10. Okay. Um, using that strategy. Yeah. Buy it, burr, burr plus SDR. So if I buy- And you only lived in the first one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. And then, um, and yeah, so after that, uh, you will have tra challenge with financing. The banks will like, you're too much leverage and things like that. So for me, it's like, is this game over of my Pokemon game or this is level up? I went to like, okay, no, it's got to be level up. So that's when I started exploring the multifamily space and, I, and squad up. I need a player two and player three. So together we did that and explore into multifamily space throwing in creative financing, which is like the hack or cheat when you're doing, uh, when you're playing. Yeah. So you can own property using other people's money, being creative on that. You know, in real estate, you don't have financial problems. You have creativity problems. So we're able to acquire a fourplex, uh, raise money for it, have some investor friends. And then recently we have a 32 unit building. We didn't put my own, our own money and have some investor wow. friends coming um, and then acquired it. Yeah. So yeah, growing my portfolio, uh, that's my journey. So 10 that you own on your own, mainly that you've bird, um, then the fourplex and this 32 plex. So 46 overall. Correct. That's amazing, man. Um, and there's so much I want to break down about that. And we haven't even talked about where you really started your, your whole journey back in uh, in the Philippines. But I, I, I want to, since we're on the topic, go back to that first deal so that people can really feel that. So you said you bought, it, did you say it was a, a condo that yeah. 350? So you bought it for 350. Did you envision that you would be trying Airbnb or was it just going to be your house? Uh, no, it was, it, it, it wasn't an Airbnb that time. So that I think when I was like, Hey dude, how did you choose Airbnb? And my answer, like Airbnb chose me or like the short-term rental because yeah. accidentally that was a rental property because um, usually people 
get into the space because they want a slice of paradise or they want a, sli a, a place where they want to. So I, I was assigned in a place called Tofino. It's like a surfing area. It's actually the California of Canada. It's a surfing spot, okay. vacation destination during winter. It's a wedding destination because people want to see the waves, the stormy waves, and it's a whale watching area. So really, it's a vacation destination. That being said, it's very uh, SDR friendly. So it is very good. In if everyone, I think the whole you know we know how regulations uh, can really affect our industry. So mm -hmm. having that. Uh, uh, a municipality very um, proponent of short-term rental because they know that it has a socioeconomic impact and tourism really plays good revenue to the town. So, so I I bought an Airbnb not knowing how to run it, just like okay, you know, I'll just acquire this and I'll figure the rest, you know, like okay. that. <laughs> um, and so, and then ask ask around like, hey, hey guys, uh, in my co-works coworker, if I'm gonna ask somebody to manage my property, who would that be? And then my manager that time is like, hey, my hubby can do that. So took him for coffee, handshake, and that's the property management. Since then, that's 2015, seven years later, he's still managing it. Wow. He's grown, yeah, so his growth portfolio from one to 70. So he's managing 70 properties now. It's pretty good. Um, and awesome. it's a really great de destination. That, so that's my springboard. Okay. At the same time, um, yeah, cash flow is great. But like I said, the, ac the appreciation. Yeah. Well... And going back to that, did I miss that? I thought you said you also lived in that property part time as well. Well, it's good because I travel for. I actually live on the plane because I fly seventy five to hundred flights a year. But wow. then when you yeah, when you ask uh, people like, okay, uh, when you park your luggage, that's your consider a tax residency. You really don't have to really live in that property. But if you consider like, your mail in there, you pay the utilities, right. your your health insurance is there, your driver license is that address. So that's considered your residence for tax purposes and for residency purposes. Okay, cool. So you buy it for three fifty, and then you said just a few years later it was worth one point three. Did you 100%. renovate the crap out of that thing, or how how did it appreciate no. that much? Ah, uh, that's that's the beauty of uh, of of appreciation of properties. Yeah, I think California, New York, Vancouver, Toronto. These are the market that really appreciates very much because the demand is there. You know, I think it's right. basic economics, so supply and demand, you know. Um, and on top of that, this is like a, probably this would be like Monterey in, in California yeah. area. Okay. Um, yeah, that really um, coveted place. People like really like the rich and the riches of the West Coast goes there and it really, um, wow, really appreciated the value. Yeah. So you, you buy this one, it appreciates, you do a cash out refi and you just go and do the same thing. You buy the next one and Correct. then buy the next one. How, how long did it take you to get from one to 10? Um, if, well, my first was 2015, really didn't think much of it because I was like, okay, you know, it's good. Uh, and then I didn't buy until 2019. I, uh, my, my plan was one to two every year, but this year I did five. So when, when, that's when we like, I really want to get serious. Nice. I, I quit my job and then just focus on this and then sign up to mastermind surrounding yourself with people that talks like this and, you know, collaborating with other Pokemon trainers, squad up. And that yeah. really like, like really like jump, jump start. I love it, training. man. I love it. Well, there's a lot that I want to break down from the evolution of your business, but before we get too deep into it, life growing up for Mark was not in Canada. Uh, it was in in the Philippines, and that's that's a third world country. And then you know to see that where you've come today is pretty inspiring. So can you just kind of take us through that journey and some of the the turning points, I guess you could say, of what brought you to where you are today? Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. Grew up in the Philippines, a farm boy in a village of a hundred. Mm, so like, wow. And then uh initially i was actually thinking of california i got my license california i got a job offer in cedar sinai in la my mom sister lives there around beverly hills west hollywood area um but that time when i graduated 2008 2009 is the recession and then mm -hmm. like um the immigration of us is closed so i'm i cannot go until like, i think the waiting time for us is five years okay. and then 2010 olympics vancouver 2010 olympics came on my way uh, uh uh, home from work, I saw 2010 Vancouver Olympics. You got to be here. And then I got two to three weeks vacation. I told my mom, mom, I want to see snow, you know, growing up in a tropical area, 
the snow is like white Christmas, things like that. Like, I just want to see snow. That's crazy idea. And then I was like, well, if you can get your travel document, so be it, go for it. And it's just like, okay, wrote a letter, apply for a do visa document, you know. The, and you were how old at this time? I was 21. Okay. 2021. So yeah, one year out of fresh of uni. Um, and then I, I, I said, okay, the rest, like, let's see how the fate will, like, if it's meant for, it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So got my travel document, mom, I'm leaving, you know, fine. I went to Vancouver, saw, I saw the Olympics, initially just planning to do two to three weeks, but then everyone was so friendly, um, calling my, and then that time it's Olympic time, Canada won over US, our hockey. We love hockey here. Everyone's high five, singing the national anthem on the train. Like, mom, Canadians are so friendly. They didn't even know I'm a tourist. Like, high five for Canada. And then the, it's so packed. Like, the Olympic spirit was so good. It's like, okay, maybe I can get a job here. I'll stay here. I'll, I'm going to extend my, you know, my, my, my stay for six months. Went to the hospital. Hey, are you guys hiring? At that time, um, well, I think healthcare is always, like, pandemic proof, always needs. So, like, okay, if Canada needs your skill, we're going to take you. Okay, just get your license, get your work here, and then we'll give you they even offer signing bonus and even paid for my tuition and paid for my um, airfare to go here. Nice. And then that time, uh, yeah, so I think for me, it's like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. You know, some people like the stars align because there are some that are, as I, I've known of some friends that are really planning to go here, but really like three or four times get denied. So I think there's some part of it, but also like really, like you've got to have your mindset to it that you want to do it. Um, and then having that mindset as well, we reach that point that, that, okay, I'm going to rent, uh, cause you have to build credit back home. You, there's no nothing, there's no mortgage. And even the concept of home ownership, if you are from a farm in the Philippines, you're in the poor class. So there is poor class, middle class, rich class. We are probably getting to, that's why mom sent us to education to go to Manila, which is the capital, um, go to study, get your degree. Cause that's your way to quality of life. That's your way to go in another class. Um, and that's, my mom said, that's the only one we can give you guys inherit. So she's a teacher and my dad's a, a rice farmer. So that is, okay. All of you, you have to get your degree. That's your way to, to get your quality of life up, uh, higher than what we are right now. Um, and then she really gave us the value of education. And that led me into where I am right now at the same time. But now that also you have to break that mindset of, I, I will be worker forever, you know, mm, uh, yeah. that, like, you know, like the quadrant from, uh, from rich dad, poor dad, you know, exactly. Em em employee mindset to business to investor. Um, so you have to be on that side. Um, so, and then in a country like this, that you have equal opportunity, once you set your mind to it, you can do it. And I want to be actually, I want to uh, back backtrack to it is we, we are creating a community in here um, for in, we want to help in the Filipino community to have a positive image where they, if we can do it, they can do it as well. And sometimes people are like, no, it's like a scam. No, we're always be mindset, but no, we are doing it. We're happy to educate you. Uh, there's so many ways. You just have to have that mindset, put the 1% and we're going to help you with the 99%. So that's like our giving back to our community. Um, backtrack to the Pokemon trainer squad. I met two other um, business partners and that's our why. We want to help our community and that connects us together. So my business, my other business partner is a CPA, works for the bank. She does her underwriting in all numbers. It is a numbers game. So guys, don't worry if you're not good with numbers, just like me. I'm a science guy, but having <laughs> it's who, not how is another one. And then, um, and then the other one is in the construction. But together, we want to help our community and our pay, like help us to go like do what we're doing because we know that we're doing something for the greater good. And when you say your community, uh, you're talking about the Filipino community. Correct. Okay. So how are you impacting the Filipino community? You say you've got a community, you've got a, it sounds like a group. How are you attracting them? Yeah. So we created a Facebook group so nice. with, um, of a Filipino, we call it FIRE. We're very, yeah, Filipinos in real estate. Oh, uh, nice. So I fire, like it. Yeah. So FIRE, and then with a, with a Filipino term called Bayanihan, which is a Filipino term where um, back in the rice farm days where the, when you move from one place to another, you have a collective uh, number of Filipinos in a bamboo and then kind of have the nipa hut and then like moving it from one place to another. Um, so it's in the lens of real estate, but collectively um, helping each other towards that goal. 
So I feel like that I I came I came up with that name because I was like this is very very uh, appropriate for this. So buy any hand on fire. Uh, if there are Filipino listener, please join us. Um, we go there. We have webinars every every month. Um, to to bring in and teach uh, provide value and having maybe one of these days, Kyle, you will be on there. Uh, we have some accountants. We have realtors, mortgage brokers, and we want to ultimately we want everyone to do deals together and then succeed in the real estate um, towards financial freedom. I love it, man. That that's so cool. And, and uh, just a, you know, a, a real good point of where your, your heart is at on this whole thing, right? Like I, I love that you've, you've uh, game and gametize or however you want to say this into a way of like making it fun and it's collecting Pokemon, right? Like it's not just about the creating wealth for you. It you've kind of, turn this into your own challenge, but at the same time, you know, you, you can just tell you're having fun with the whole thing. And that's very attractive to a lot of people. And I'm sure you're changing lives just by, just by who you are, man. So, um, that's, that's really cool. So if you guys want to go check that out, it's, uh, fire, I'm assuming with a pH because of the Philippine. Yeah. It's actually no? Filipino. It's the F. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that would have been awesome. Um, all right. So guys go check out that Facebook group, but, um, Mark, you, you get into Vancouver and you're in the healthcare industry. What are you doing in the healthcare industry at that time? Oh, uh, I work as a nurse. I work in emergency and trauma and I travel for work. So travel nurse. I, I am a travel nurse. And you said you were taking as many as 75 to 100 flights per year? Mm-hmm. Well, another, uh, another passion of mine is airplanes. So I think if I didn't become a nurse, I'll be in aviation industry. So the more flights, the better. I will always take the more, uh, the, 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 the the road less taken. The more flights, little cities, the better for me, which is weird because people would like direct flight get there. Um, on top of that, like the credit card points, the uh, collecting points, which is yeah. another topic. Um, I, I usually do round the world trip once a year on premium cabin with like zero or maybe just tax. That's great. So, yeah. Very nice. Um, I guess the the thing that's surprising to me is most time I hear travel nurse and I think, they have three or four contracts a year. They go to that one place. Was yours a different setup? Is it different in Canada? Yeah. So that's standard in US. Mm-hmm. They usually go like 12 weeks, three to four. Mm-hmm. Um, can they, Canada depends on how much you want to work and how much, how less you want to work. So it depends on the need. And then you can use your negotiation. It's, a, it's funny. I relate that too. Because when you're negotiating rate with your broker, um, like, oh, okay, this lender is giving me this. How come you're giving me this? You know, you can also use that negotiation towards your contract. Oh, I can only do two weeks. You know, I have a I have a diving trip based on the Caribbean. So I can only do two weeks, take it or leave it. But based on the demand, you have to market yourself, you know, like, okay, well, you know, there's not much, uh, there's no more else than it's going to take this or don't burn your bridge. Once you do a good job, they want you back. So the terms is on you. Like, okay, you work with my terms. I work with your terms, you know? So cool. yeah, it's, it's, it, okay. it worked very well for me. So that, yeah, we can do as little as one day. Wow. Or as much as eight months or nine, nine months or even a wow. year. Nice. That's news to me. Uh, so where did real estate and short-term rentals pop up in this journey? Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I said, when, um, so when we take contracts, travel and accommodation comes there. Usually the company does it for you and they give you like a certain stipend. Mm-hmm. For me, since I love the credit card game, I want to book my own trip, charge it on my credit card and build a company. At the same time, for ch- uh, using the accommodation, I, I have the options. I don't want hotel. I want near the hospital. And usually the, the, the hotels are usually in downtown area. They're not near the hospital, especially in a smaller community. So where there is like, I'm going to pay a furnished place rent the house, um, but then having that mindset that instead of uh, uh, paying that rent, I'm, I will buy the property. And that's the goal for now. You know, We're going to buy multifamily buildings around the hospital and offer it to the uh, traveling medical professionals using my connection, um, talking to the hospital providers, uh, hospitals and travel companies to get them on contract and having that um, comfort that this is built, um, curated by a nurse for the nurses, you know, travel like so. We know the standard. We know what we want. We need, we want proximity to the hospital. We want fr- um, Wi-Fi, very private space, dark curtain because usually we do night shifts and our healthcare juice, which is bottle of wine. 
we'll be good. You know, we're Netflix nice. and chilling. We work 12, 13 hours. We're A plus tenants, less maintenance, and we pay, we, we pay okay. We, we, pay, we pay premium. So for that amenity. That's awesome. Have you uh, met Jesse Vasquez yet? He does a lot of what you're talking about in regards to midterm rentals for nurses. I've heard of and Furnish yeah. Finder. I've heard that too, yeah. which is b- very popular in US. I have yet to connect. I think um, Mike Shogren, my coach, will um, will have Furnish Finder CEO next month, he said. So nice. I'm looking forward to it, to have that same or maybe collaborate, maybe squad up to have yeah. a similar model for Canada. Yeah. Um, so exciting. Yeah. Pretty. It's it's what? a it's a guest avatar. Yeah. I gotta get you connected with Jesse because he's killing it in the uh, nursing space. Let me rephrase my my question about uh, when real estate came in. Why why did real estate enter? You're. It sounds like you had a passion for what you were doing. A lot of times, I find people getting into real estate have a specific reason, and one of the more immediate reasons is to leave their job. It doesn't sound like you were looking for that necessarily. So why real estate? Yeah. Um, well, I guess it was back. I don't like renting that. And then that just leads to like, hey, there's power to it. And then gamifying it like, hey, this is good. Not really after like the revenue, because really like why, my my first property is that's good enough for me. You yeah. know, if we'll go like quantity that like I, I'll be I'll, I'll be set. But um, it's addicting. It's gamifying. You want more. You level up. You meet people that are also in that game and it works. It gives you money. And yeah. So, and then it doesn't mean that it's either or, you know, you can have your job and you can still have a real estate on the side and you can do both. That's what I'm telling. Like, you know, you're, you're not going to quit your job. You can have it as passive as you want, or you yeah. can be involved as you want. You can, you can, but why choose if you can have both? I like it, but you did quit your job. At so, some point, yeah. Yeah. So what, what led to that decision? And was that a tough decision? It was, it was, it wasn't because I really love uh, after putting, I think I did 14 years. Uh, I really love what I'm doing, uh, but pandemic really take a toll on it. Mm. It's very polarizing where, um, yeah, being a virtual, like, are you mass or not mass vaccine or yeah, like the political aspect to it, the bureaucracy. Um, yeah. And, and just like, you know what, this is, yeah, it's one thing to like go, I want to work versus I have to work. So that part which I guess it makes it easier for me to exit that because I have an alternative. I feel bad for people that doesn't have, like I have to, because I don't, I don't have any other choices. Um, so yeah, I know it's, there was one where I was in triage where the phase of, you know, usually the first person that you're going to meet in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then part of our triage question is like, are you vaccinated or not? Um, and then they'll be like, no, I don't believe in vaccine, my body, my choice, things like that. Um, and then like, why are you here? Like, why? You know, <laughs> things like that. And I know from there that my empathy is gone. The spirit of Florence Nightingale, which is the mother of nursing, already left. I was like, okay, you know what? I need to step back. I'm not being really, I'm professional and becoming. Um, and I'll just give myself a break. So I gave myself a three weeks, three months break, went mm. on traveling. And then uh, I did hiking in Scotland. I did Middle Eastern trip. Nice. And then I came back after three months. I still don't want to go back, you know? It's mm. like, you know what? Life is short. You have to enjoy what you're doing. And I'm a big proponent of it. You got to enjoy what you're doing. And I just woke up one day that I, this is not serving me any purpose, which is sad because it's, it's, I've been doing it. I've been really good at it, but there will be a time where you have to step back and like, no, I, I mean, I can always go back if I want to, you know, there's also that um, security that I can always have a job if I want to. But uh, for me, I'd like, I'd rather, uh, focus more on this and just relating. You know, I mm. uh, actually um, Airbnb picked me as the host leader in my area. Nice. So they, yeah. So I run a 480 members of Airbnb hosts in our community. If anyone's familiar, are you familiar with host community? I've heard of it. I I haven't been a part of any of that. Okay. So what Airbnb does is they build. Um, so whenever there is a thousand Airbnb hosts in a certain geographical area, they created a Facebook group. And they pick one or two to run that. Group. Mm. So here in Vancouver Island, I'm one of them. I said, hey, Mark, we love your Pokemon strategy. I think you will be a good ambassador for Airbnb to, for young people to be get into a real estate through that gamifying experience. And we'd love to get you on board. So I get my workshop. Um, I We do weekly meetings with all the Canadian um, Airbnb hosts. Twice a, month, twice a year, we get to talk to Brian Chesky. 
Nice. Um, we get free business cards. You get Zoom, uh, free Zoom account, and then some swag. So they, if I want to organize a meetup group, Airbnb will, uh, will pay for it. And then, um, yeah, twice a year. So, you know, and then they send you for like, hey, uh, here's how you can expand your reach. These are the updates, what's happening in global community. So having that mm. connection. Um, but uh, for me, it, um, yeah, so I think it's an affirmation that I'm doing something good and being recognized by Airbnb. So that's good. And then now relating from my hospital to hospitality. So I feel like I still serve the community in one, in another capacity. Nice. That's good, man. Um, hey, we're, we're kind of getting low on time here. We haven't talked a lot of strategies, so I do want to make a quick left-hand turn here. You you said that, you know, first 10, you're doing the Burr strategy. Where are you finding those deals? Is it on the MLS? Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I said, the regulation is big. So if you want a strategy of SDR, so funny enough, there's a building here that's near the hospital that is very SDR friendly. So that's when I like, okay, I'm going to marry this building because usually nine out of 10, they're not Airbnb friendly. So that's in my guest avatar. Um, so for, um, yeah, so I, I have a realtor that knows what, what I like, uh, what specification, and then he's just like, okay, hey, Mark, here you go. So it's all listings, uh, all M MLS listings. Um, and then I, I know the, the income strategy, uh, income uh, capability of this mm -hmm. building. So I'm happy to know that like, okay, I'm putting an offer. Um, usually it's listing price or lower, try to lower a little bit. Um, and then turnkey, because I don't, I don't know construction. And for me, speed is the name of a game. If I have, usually I will schedule like a one week in, in between assignment, one to two weeks, order everything in Amazon. I have the, yeah, my two requirements when I do turnkey is uh, change the floor. That's mostly carpeted. I wanted vinyl and then fresh coat of paint. And then ordered everything in Amazon. I partnered with some um, furniture shops here. So when I go, even just a call, initially I'll just go and pick. But then after a while and become a pattern, I'll just give them a call. Mark's Airbnb package. And then they will deliver it a certain day. Unbox everything, furnished, and boom. Like, okay, you're evolved, ready ready to go, you know? Um, but uh, uh, yeah, and also knowing that uh, once you started with one, gaining traction, your doctor friends, your nurses friends, like, hey, do you have another one? Do you have another one? And they keep on repeating because usually they go monthly contracts and uh, they come back every every three months. So you get that repeated guest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that kind of um, that can and it's pandemic proof. It's three sixty five days. Oh, and the same th same thing. Where else can you get best housekeepers? The hospital. You know, yeah. during pandemic, Airbnb has this like cleaning standard. I was like, don't worry. My housekeepers were trained very well in infection control, highest standard sanitation. That's it good. gave the boost, you know? That's it's good. perfect. I don't have to train them. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. That's called using your resources. Uh, all right. So we've been talking about leveling up this entire time. You you start with one house, you level up to 10, then you level up to a fourplex, and then you level up to a 32-unit apartment complex. Or is it apartment complex? Or what, what do you call it over there? We call it multifamily apartment building. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, how did that transition happen from single family to mainly to this 32 unit? How did you level up there? Okay. Well, as like I said, at some point in your investing journey, you will hit the wall. Financing is the issue. The banks don't want to, to lend you money. Your, your, your debt credit ratio is high uh, or you cannot increase your income so much. So this is when you like bypass the bank. You can have the private loan, the hard money lender, or you can have other people's money. And usually um, they're easier to deal with, but higher risk, but also high interest. Um, so knowing that I cannot get, I'm, I'm game over with the bank. Um, before they love me, now they hate me. Like do not talk, talk to us if you still have that number of properties. You know, you're too much risk for us. Mm. So that's when they're like, okay. Um, I went into a mastermind, I, actually YouTube. As a millennial, all my like, okay, what's the YouTube? How to? Everything is there. You know, take advantage of that. Um, there's so much free stuff, but also um, having like a coach wherein like really will have based on your um, personal situation. And my coach at that time was like, it's either you partner with someone, there would be a money partner and you'll be the working partner, JV, or you can do uh, private lenders, Use that if you want to do it yourself. Because initially, yeah. as a millennial, it's like, 
I have so much trust issues. I built my portfolio. I'm I don't want partnership. I don't want to handle other people's money. That's too much risk. Yeah, you know, initially that was my yeah. like swipe swipe left. <laughs> 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 but then you know it really changed my mindset when they do not underestimate the power of partnership. I I know it's like a dating. Uh, you get to know someone, and it's like a really long term because you're on a project together. But for me, it's been a positive one because we went uh, uh, we we met on a ma- mastermind. We like we're they're already also investing with their financial knowledge. Um, and then that's for their expertise. It complements me. Like hers is multifamily long term and mine is short-term rental. Like, what if we combine our mm. our expertise together and multifamily short-term rental? So if the numbers make sense in a long-term rent, how much more if we make a short throw in a short-term rental and make two X, three X in cash flow? You know? Um, so we didn't do private lender, but I did partner and then together. We were in a course in Vegas with Pace Morby Creative Financing, nice. and this is like okay, using other people's money, really getting like, like I said, it's not finance problem, it's creativity problem, and it's so mm. good. Which is well said because that's so true, and and you know that's something a lot of people don't even know about is just these creative ways to be able to go and buy real estate. So is that what you did with this one? Did you get it seller finance, or how did you get this one? So the fourplex, we are able to, um, yeah, like we we did. We're able to get a uh, lender because once you enter the commercial space, when you go into multifamily, it's not for residential. You get into small business or commercial and it's not your credit score anymore. It's not your FICO. It's not your, it's the building's capability right. to make money. Right. So, which is good because the, the limit is endless, yeah, infinity, absolutely. you know? So you just have to, like a business loan, you have just to present that the, 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 the building's cap, uh, capacity to earn money will support the mortgage. So we did it good. It's all numbers game. The spreadsheet, like tick, 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 all green. And then here you go, bank. We want to borrow money with this. And usually it's with residential financing, it's 80%, sometimes 90% loan to value. With commercial, it's 60 to 65. Okay. So at that time, we're able to get 70% loan to value because the numbers are making sense. The bank believes in that. And then the 30% with a little bit of construction and furnishing, we put that in there and then raise money towards it. And then um, using a structure for we have shareholder and offer it that the return of because uh, return of investment will yield up to fifteen percent, eighteen percent. So for investors, that's pretty good because the stocks are down, cryptos are down, bitcoins the and it's a tangible asset, you know. So there's like we said, this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna break the mortgage or refinance in year two, and then we will return your capital. For yeah, for passive investors, two years I'll get my. I'll get my capital, I'll get 80% return. And then I still have my name because we form it under corporation. We sell the share and then they they got a name on there. They're co-owner of a fourplex and not doing anything, just sitting passively nice. and just do more. So that's been pretty good. And we use that model. At the same time, being surrounded in healthcare, I'm surrounded with doctors that are high net worth. And also it's a relationship. They know that, hey, Mark, you've been doing this. They trust me. They okay. Hey, uh, we have just simple approach like, hey, we have a project that's ongoing. Okay, how much do you need? Uh, do you want to know what it is? No, here you go. Take my money. Okay, I'll send, you know, like like raising capital was quite easy in that aspect. That's awesome, man. I mean, you are the epitome of one of my favorite sayings, which is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And this just sounds like the consistent leveling up for you is you leveled up with knowledge through other people, right? You, you, we're really just open to to learning things, you, whether it was joining Pace's education, whether it was reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or getting a mentor, or just leveling up with this money partner, this long-term rental uh, multifamily partner, right? You're just continuing to level up through other people's knowledge and other people's resources. And so uh, you, you, do, you do not lack the creativity bone, man. So <laughs> keep on going. Um, I want to go ahead and pivot now into uh, our our. Facebook group and getting people to ask their questions, but we're going to log off of the podcast right now. So Mark, where can people find you and how can people connect? Okay. Um, So my company name is Unitum Holdings, www.unitumholdings.com. If you want to, I'm active in Facebook, not much on Instagram. Uh, So you can find me, Mark Hernandez. I will have the Pokemon. (laughs) I created my own cover photo and I'm wearing a Pokemon shirt while riding an airplane with my champagne and caviar. So that's pretty much myself. So that's it. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to chat. I'm always happy to connect with other Pokemon trainers and let's get you your Pokemon. 
<laughs> let's do it, man. Any last words for the audience before we log off? Um, I would say mindset. Start with mindset. Invest yourself with uh, financial knowledge. And then once you do that, follow whatever. Because there are so many ways to make money in real estate. You can have the arbitrage co-host. You can have flipping. We'll say. So pick one and find someone that's doing it and then follow that person. Yeah, I love it. Mark Hernandez, thank you so much for giving our audience such amazing knowledge here for short-term rentals and helping them conquer the world of Airbnb. We're going to stay on with you now here in the Six Figure Formula community. And for those of you that are listening on the podcast and YouTube channel, we will log off and see you next time. Okay, so as always, go ahead and check out the show notes for this episode with Mark. And if you can just get to that point where you check your ego out the door, you're just learning from other people, you're partnering with other people, you're finding ways to add value to others and to partner with those that are maybe providing value in places that you are lacking. And if you're not good at math, like Mark said he is, uh, then he's bringing on someone that is able to help him from the numbers standpoint. So what are you lacking in that you can bring someone else in to help you grow and to level up? That's exactly what I hope you get away from today's podcast with Mark. And we'll go ahead and see you next time on the Fearless Investor Podcast. We're helping you to conquer the world of short-term rentals. Can't wait to see you there.